Okay, good day everyone. This video will provide a short introduction into the topics or sections we intend to cover in this playlist. Now, when one talks about technical aspects of computers, one of the first things that springs to mind is the microprocessor. It is this component that started the computing era, which many considers as the next major technological revolution after the Industrial Revolution. Now, in the microprocessor we have used for this demonstration, observe that one side is made of connector pins, which the microprocessor had used to communicate with the outer circuits, or in other words, to input and output data. The microprocessor is also commonly referred to as a CPU, which is the shortened form for central processing unit. It is in the CPU that computations of a standard computer would take place. Thus, for example, the software program that you would be using to view this video would be running in the CPU of the device. We would be covering the basic fundamentals of CPUs in several videos of this series. Now, one technique to connect a CPU to a circuit board would be via a CPU socket as demonstrated above. But in some other circuits, for example in cell phones, where space is an issue, the CPU would not use long connector pins, but would instead provide flat metal connectors, which can be directly soldered to the circuit board. The next component we shall look into would be the computer memory. In modern computers, one would find mainly three types of memory components. The first type is called DRAM, which is the shortened form of dynamic random access memory. We would be covering the basic fundamentals of DRAM memories in a separate video of the series. Thus, for example, if one wants to upgrade the memory of a modern home computer, one would go shopping for DDR or double data rate memories. And these DDR memory modules internally are nothing but DRAM memories. The next memory type one finds inside a computer are called static memories. These memories are the fastest of what is currently available, but they do cost more to manufacture. Thus in home computers we mostly find these static memories inside the circuitry of the CPU. These memories are implemented using a type of transistor circuit, usually referred to as flip-flops. The other type of memory commonly used in computers are called flash memories. These are the same type of memories one finds inside USB flash drives or memory sticks, as well as micro SD memory cards, which are commonly used to store data in the such of cell phones. These flash memories employ a technology known as floating gates, where an electrical charge is stored in a region, surrounded by an insulator. Thus, when an electric charge is stored into this region, as it is surrounded by an insulator, that charge cannot escape or discharge easily, unless until the circuit forces it to do so. In modern computers, these flash memories are now being used as a replacement to magnetic storage devices. Note that the two previous types of memories we discussed, which were the DRAM memories, as well as static memories, can hold data only as long as the computer has power. The moment the power is switched off, the data in above memories will get erased. Thus, if one wanted to store data for prolonged durations, the conventional technique was to write that data to a magnetic storage device. But in modern computers, the flash memories are slowly replacing the older magnetic storage mediums because flash memories are faster. These new storage devices are commonly referred to as SSDs or solid state drives. Next, we have the conventional magnetic storage medium. Observe how rotating metal plates which have been coated with a magnetic material has been used to store information. At the end of each arm, one will find a small device that can be used to read or write data from or to the magnetic plates. The next unit shown here in red is the power supply. It is used to convert the 230 or 110 volts mains power to voltages that can be used by the electrical and electronic circuits of the computer. Next distributed around the circuit board, observe some additional units shown here in color metallic copper. These components provide additional functionalities required by a computer. For example, networking functionalities, 
Wi-Fi functionalities, interfaces to communicate with the keyboards, computer display screen, etc. Thus observe that in this circuit board, we have a separate unit to control the system bus. The system bus is the name given to the set of communication lines used in the computer to allow the CPU to communicate with the other components, for example, the computer memory or storage devices, etc. If one wonders as to why, one does not see these communication lines reaching all the way to the CPU. The reason is that they run under the surface like underground cables. And that was a short introduction to most of the sections we will be covering in this series. This series will attempt to discuss the components of a computing system in a format that can be relatively easily understood by school-aged children and above. We will mostly focus on elaborating the basic fundamentals of computing systems. Thus, this series is intended to be a supplementary content to the school STEM curriculums. In this series, we will take a closer look into several of the units of computing systems, emphasizing on how all functionality inside a computer takes place via the proper sequencing of electrical signals. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. If you did enjoy the content or found it useful, do give us a like and do also subscribe to our channel. Okay then, have a nice day and see you in our next video. Bye.